What an incredible and extremely intense jump rope workout this one was. I just had to share it with you guys. At the moment, I'm just trying to get my camera positioned. I don't know if you can tell, but on this particular day, it was extremely wet. It was raining heavily and it was very windy. Prior to this, while I was warming up using the basic boxer skip, my camera kept getting knocked over because of the rain and the wind. So what I'm doing now is I'm positioning my camera in such a way to get a little bit of shelter. I have the camera set up under a tree and close to a wall for shelter from the rain and the wind. And I even had to use rocks to keep my camera propped up. On this particular day, because it was so wet and windy and also cold, I could, I could have easily just said, I'm not going to jump rope today. I'll just stay inside. But sometimes on days when we may not necessarily want to go outside because of the weather conditions, on those days, we could actually have our best workout or a, a fantastic workout. So at the moment, I'm doing 10 double unders. And I'm, here I'm using cross ropes, half pound rope. So this particular day, it was wet, it was windy. I did want to jump rope, but the weather conditions kind of put me off a little bit from wanting to go outside. But I persisted. I went outside despite the weather conditions and I got in this amazing jump rope workout, something which I haven't done. Here at the moment, I'm doing the next set of double unders which consisted of 20 repetitions in a row. So you see in the bottom right-hand corner there, there is one rock. Behind the camera, there's another big rock. So the first set of double unders, I did 10. The second set, I did 20. And in between each set, I just take a little bit of a break just to relax my body, shake out my legs, shake out my arms, slow down my breathing, and get kind of mentally prepared for the next set of double unders. For this set, which I'm just about to start, I do 30 double unders. So for each set of double unders that I do, I add 10. I'm doing a double under ladder all the way up to 100. So here I'm doing 30 double unders in a row. The next set, I do 40. The set after that, I do 50. The next set after that, I did 60 in a row. And so on and so forth, all the way up to the point, to the final set, where I did 100 double unders in a row. So for this workout, even though it wasn't that long, I did 550 double unders, and I didn't make any mistakes. So this is a challenging workout, not only in terms of stamina, but also in terms of coordination to do that many double unders without making mistakes and not taking breaks that were too long in between sets. For the first five sets, I used cross ropes, half pound rope to fatigue my shoulders a little bit to make it a little bit more challenging. And then for the next five sets, I switched it up and I used the quarter pound rope for a little bit more speed. So we have 10 sets of double unders in a ladder fashion. The first set I did 10, the second set 20, all the way up to 100 unbroken double unders in a row. And as I said, in between sets, just slowing down my breath, walking around, getting mentally prepared for the next set, shaking out my arms a little bit, stretching a tiny little bit. And I kept looking over the fence there or the gate because I was actually expecting someone to stop by not too long after this workout. So just in case they came by early, I just wanted to see if their car showed up and just enjoying the surroundings, looking up at the sky so even though it was pouring rain, it was wet, it was windy, and 
that was kind of making me a little bit reluctant to go outside, even though I was really keen to go outside and jump rope. The weather was kind of making me, was putting me off the idea a little bit. Had I not gone outside, I would not have accomplished this particular fantastic workout on this day. Doing this many double unders in a row, or this many sets like this in this fashion, was quite challenging. I apologize that my head goes out of view while jumping, but I, the camera was just really hard to get set up. And in hindsight, I could have jumped rope a little bit farther away from the camera. But still, it's all good. I'm delighted to, for myself even, to have captured this footage because it's maybe not something, this workout is not one that I want to do really anytime soon again because, as I said, it was quite difficult. Ten sets of double unders with the last set consisting of 100 in a row, the set before that, 90, the set before that, 80. So not an easy feat. And if you're learning how to do double unders at the moment, take comfort in the fact that at one point, even doing just one double under or two or three in a row was challenging for me. When I was learning how to do double unders, I thought being able to do 10 in a row would be a huge challenge given that I was struggling with learning how to do just a few of them in a row. But I stayed persistent, I practiced regularly, and I was patient. I knew if I kept putting in the effort and I kept improving my technique, and by putting in that effort, practicing regularly, I knew my conditioning in terms of performing double unders would get better and better and that's exactly what happened gradually over time I started performing a few more double unders in a row and then I set myself once I was able to do say 10 or 20 being able to do 100 became something that I set my mind to That was the next milestone in terms of double unders that I worked towards, doing 100 in a row. And again, I kept practicing patiently, persistently. And then soon enough, I was able to do 200 in a row and then even over 300 in a row. So it's amazing what we can accomplish with persistent practice while staying patient, not giving up. If you are learning how to do double unders, I have a playlist on my channel with a lot of tutorials and double under workout videos, which you can use for help. Also know that through these videos and one-on-one instruction, I've helped people who were struggling with doing even one double under at one point. I helped them go from doing one to doing hundreds of them in a row. I have one, I'll call him a friend, jump rope friend, who can now do 100 double unders backwards even. And that person once thought they wouldn't be able to do 10 double unders in a row. So if you're learning and you're struggling, It's natural to get a little bit frustrated. Believe me, I was there. I've been there. I've thrown my jump rope on the ground many times. I've hit myself or whipped myself with the jump rope many times to the point where I wanted to give up. But don't give up. Keep practicing. You will make progress. And when you see yourself making progress, that'll motivate or encourage you to continue even further. Here, when I'm doing these double unders, one important thing which you will notice that I talk about during the tutorial videos on double unders is my feet and leg positioning. When I'm jumping off the ground, I'm not bending my knees excessively. I'm not kicking my feet forwards or I'm not bringing my feet back behind my body. Those are a few common mistakes 
that people do. And I did them myself too when I started learning how to do double unders. But they can lead to fatigue and they can even lead to injury. Because oftentimes if you're bending your legs a lot or you're kicking your feet in front of your body or behind your body, you tend to be jumping high off the ground, which forces a lot more impact on your body when your feet do make contact with the ground. When I'm doing the double unders, I'm really not jumping that high off the ground. And I'm using my feet, the toes and the balls of my feet in a very spring-like fashion. I'm landing on the ground quite gently, pushing off the ground with the toes and balls of my feet. And notice my feet, they kind of point at an angle towards the ground while my legs are kept fairly straight. Of course, there's some knee bend, but there's not an excessive amount of knee bend. So the technique is very efficient. Here I'm just walking around. I have my arms behind my back, a very relaxing position, just slowing down my body in between sets, trying to calm down my body, slow down my breathing. So when you're jumping rope, you don't necessarily have to jump rope without taking any stops or without taking rests. Oftentimes, if I'm doing jump rope tricks, for example, I will perform a trick or a few tricks. And if I make a mistake, then I'll just walk around a little bit, relax before beginning again. So sometimes we, if we exercise, there's this idea that we have to keep, keep moving aggressively without taking any breaks, or let's say if you're going on a run, some people don't even want to stop and walk, but it's okay. If you feel like you need to take a little bit of a break, that's okay. Maybe slow down your, your breathing before beginning again. And here too, when I'm doing these double unders, if you compare my basic arm positioning when I'm performing double unders with, say, when I do the boxer skip or the regular two-foot hop. The arm position is quite similar. My forearms are at a similar angle. My upper arms are at a similar position. So I'm not using my arms to swing the rope when performing double unders. There's a lot of wrist motion. I'm using my wrists and my forearms to some extent to spin the rope. But I'm not using my upper arms. I have the cross rope handles in my pocket at the moment while I walk around. And the reason I'm doing that is one, to keep the handles dry because of the rain. And two, just to give my hands even a momentary rest from holding the handles. So I'm treating here the next set like a, almost like a brand new set my body's getting a little bit of a rest my hands are getting a rest in terms of cross rope i'm jumping rope on their mat which you can't see it's out of view right now dave hunt the founder of cross rope he actually sent me a cross rope mat when he heard that the concrete that i would be jumping on was quite abrasive. So usually when I jump rope, in the past I tended to jump rope on concrete or timber boards. And because I was using very basic, cheap PVC ropes, I didn't really care too much if they got damaged. But if you start using a more expensive jump rope, say for example like a cross rope, naturally you're going to want to try to preserve or protect that rope. You want the rope to last for as long as possible. So when Dave Hunt heard about the conditions of the concrete where our current accommodation is he him and his team generously sent me a, cro a cross rope mat to try and i was very pleasantly surprised that even when jumping in wet conditions like here the ground is wet it's raining the mat did not move from under my feet at all and actually on the mat there's even a little bit of rain. The surface of the mat is quite wet and still my feet were not sliding nor was the mat moving from underneath my feet. 
And that's a huge plus. When you, when you jump on a mat, you want to make sure that mat doesn't move from under your feet. Otherwise, that could easily lead to an injury. I'm just going to look at the clock here. So it looks like since I started recording this footage, 15 minutes has passed. So we're coming up towards the end of the video here against the wall now. I'm stretching out my back because I've been adding commentary here, talking. I'm guessing I've done maybe eight sets of double unders, maybe nine sets. So either the next set has 90 double unders coming up in a row, or it could be the final set, which means I would be performing 100 double unders in a row. Right now I'm just massaging my forearms a little bit. Doing this many double unders with not too much rest in between sets. It really pumps up the arms and it works the grip, the forearms. So my forearms were starting to feel quite fatigued here at the moment. So I'm just kind of shaking out my arms a little bit and I'm getting mentally prepared for the next set of double unders, which I believe is the final set consisting of 100. And I believe I threw in a few extra just for good measure, just to make sure I had completed the 100 double unders. And if you're learning how to do double unders and you want to increase the amount that you can do in a row, a very good technique is this, something which I've talked about in previous videos. Let's say you are able to do 10 double unders. That's the maximum amount you can do. A great technique is to do sets of half your maximum amount. So if you can do 10 double unders, I encourage you to try to do lots of sets with five double unders. Do that for a month and then take a few days off and then try to do as many double unders in a row as you can. And I think you'll see or you, I think you'll notice that you're able to do more double unders. So the final set, I'm going to just be quiet myself. I'm just going to watch this. Well, I was quiet for a little bit anyways, but what an amazing workout on a day that many would regard as pretty bad in terms of weather conditions. But I, I went outside and had an amazing jump rope workout, attempting something that I've actually never tried before, doing this type of double under ladder. Began with 10... 10 double unders in a row, and I just finished there with 100. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope to see you again very soon.